Hello, good morning. This is Timothy Halloran. I'm an astrologer located in Savannah, Georgia. We are talking about a new moon cycle beginning today, November 11th, 2015. And this new moon is at 19 degrees Scorpio, trying to centaur planet Chiron in Pisces and sextile to Jupiter in Virgo. So whenever we're dealing with a new moon, we are dealing with a death and birth. We are dealing with an ending and a beginning of a new cycle. So a new moon begins in the void, in the mystery, in the nothingness, which we die into, which we surrender into, which we inevitably merge into. And then surrendering into this nothingness, into this void, into this mystery, we birth new ideas, new concepts, new realities, new feelings, which bring us in touch with our nature, bring us in touch with reality. Now, when we're talking about a new moon in Scorpio, this is undoubtedly the most mysterious sign, the most dark, the most deep, the most beneath the surface. And Scorpio also rules our sensations of what we detect beneath the surface, our psychic capabilities, our subtle senses that are picking up on these deeper realities that although we might not totally see them, although we might not totally understand them, they are vague, they are hazy, they are mysterious, and so they are weird. They can cause us some sensations of disconcern. They can make us feel uncomfortable. And yet this uncomfortable feeling is us actually being invited to step into the unknown, to step into the mystery and have our reality expand. Have our reality become more concrete. Have our reality be more understood by plunging into the darkness, by searching, by surrendering to what we do not understand. We are brought into new ways of being. We are brought into our core power. We are brought into mastery of ourselves not by confining ourselves to the limited places that we know and understand and have lived our lives already, but by expanding those areas outward and searching in the darkness, surrendering to what we do not understand, out of hopes that by continuing to search reality, we will begin to learn only more of ourselves on a deeper, more concrete in our truest, deepest nature. So this new moon is a powerful initiation. To actually evolve means that we must have a level of being okay with uncertainty. We must have a level of being okay with what is outside of the box, outside of society, outside of consensus accepted belief systems, outside of the prevalent ways of living, of seeing, of working, of behaving, of feeling, of handling how we handle our emotions, of handling how we manage our day, our thoughts, our job, evolution invites us to step into the unknown and thereby take back our power, thereby be ahead of the curve, be ahead of the rest in terms of leading us into the mystery, leading us into new areas, new territories, new inventions, new forms of understanding, new levels of mastery that those of us who remain behind and remain in the comfortable pastures of the past, of our childhood, of tradition, never get to experience. And yet we are always evolving. We are always moving from the past into the future. So these people that harbor themselves in the so-called comfortable pastures inevitably and ultimately force upon themselves difficult and painful experiences as life brings us all forward. Inevitably, we all take the plunge into the mystery. We all have to face death at a certain point in our life, and so we all must surrender to what we do not understand. And hopefully we can do this in a way where we can trust nature. And trust of nature is the most important part if we are actually going to surrender to the process of what nature is 
And this process of evolution is found everywhere. Time is found everywhere. And the opportunity for us to mature, for us to advance, for us to grow is always there. And the opportunity for us to more tangibly know each other and know ourselves in a deeper, more intimate way is also always there. And these are also qualities of Scorpio, is the merging. As we master ourselves and we master nature more and more, we realize how we are part and parcel of this nature. We are connected to this nature. And this nature also reflects love. It reflects the fact that we are constantly reverberating towards and away from each other, out of love. And there is a constant attraction and repulsion found within all things, a reverberation vibration found within all things, a vibration found everywhere that reflects love. And yet this is bringing up some of these deeper existential issues of what is love, how do we bring it into our life. And this gets reflected on many, many levels. How we work together as teams, how we actually harness our own capabilities, how we come together as partners, as business partners, as romantic partners, as sexual partners, and how we can come together and fuse our energies together in order to merge, in order to create something new and different. This is transformation that is happening, and this new moon happening today is the opportunity for us to sow a seed of intention in our minds and our hearts to align with transformation and therefore align with our capability to harness our own forward power, our own future momentum, our own ascended capabilities. Yes. And these are words that we hear many times in the New Age movements and these spiritual religious groups is, let's ascend, let's, uh, you know, become enlightened, let's go above to the kingdom of heaven. And yet the Scorpio understanding is that if we really want to ascend, if we want to uh, evolve, we have to descend into reality. We cannot escape into our conceptual beliefs, into our ideologies, and actually know reality. Therefore, mastery and enlightenment and ascension does not come from ascending in the conceptual, mental, limited, blind faith type of way. Real mastery, real anchoring the kingdom of heaven, real healing and real truth is all experienced in reality. And reality is where we are. And reality oftentimes comes to us from the deepest parts of who we are. Not the most high and above places that we escape to, but the deepest parts of ourselves that we cannot escape no matter how hard we try and no matter how delusional we become. So this new moon in Scorpio is the opportunity for us to sow a seed intention to wake up. And at the time of this new moon, we do see Saturn coming into a square with Neptune that will be exact next week. And this square is actually going to be holding true through the next year and is going to be challenging our notions of accepted beliefs of uh, religion, of consensus philosophies, of how we trust our culture, of how we trust our systems. And we are actually having to look at reality and not simply escape off into fantasies. We are being gifted with the initiation to no longer have the luxury, so-called luxury, to escape into our fantasies. This new moon is the opportunity for us to sow the seed intention that we do not want any more fantasies. Do we want to be deluded by any more false ideals, false securities, false idols, false role models? No. What happens in this world where we are constantly misled by all these false notions is that we lose touch with reality, we lose touch with our senses, we lose touch with who we are, and therefore we lose our power. And then we get confined into various forms of slavery, led and organized by other delusional, also entrapped people. 
So this is the opportunity for us to wake up. And it is not something that always comes easily. There is a challenge, there is the tension that is involved with waking up. And this awakening is happening in various ways for various people on different levels. And so we have to talk about this, obviously. Now, this new moon is a fantastic opportunity for us to say that those of us who have already gone through heart-ripping opening, eyes being ripped open experiences where our false securities, our false truths have already been stripped away from us. This is the opportunity for us to harness our power as healers. For those of us who see with a good level of clarity, because we've already had to detach ourselves from culture, had to go through experiences that shredded us from our false securities. This is the opportunity for us to embody our power and hold our space for others who through the next year will be going through experiences that we've already gone through involving having our false beliefs taken from us, having our eyes open in sometimes shocking, uncomfortable ways as things that we used to believe suddenly become much more complicated, much less black and white, much less fabricated, much less simple. And so we are all constantly stepping into more complicated, deeper, realer levels of reality. And yet for those of us who really see, we see the underlying, we see the hidden, we see the invisible strings that connect all the marionettes in this world to the hidden forces that control them because they are actually not descending into the deepest levels of their reality. Therefore, they do not know what actually moves us all, what inspires us all, what fuels us all, what drives us all are the desires at the deepest levels of our being. And this awakening is happening, inviting us to see these desires, to see our core reality, to see our definitions of who we are, and to transform them. And this is happening in different ways at this time. The Divine Feminine is awakening, the Divine Masculine is awakening. So it's a very wonderful symbol that we have Venus in Libra, Mars in Virgo, both on the moon's north node, on the day of this new moon, on the day that the moon's north node transits into Virgo and will remain in Virgo for the next year and a half. So there is this very interesting symbol where Venus has already passed the moon's north node. It's already happened. She's already got her evolutionary update over last Sunday. And now she is in Libra. So the feminine is awakening at this time. She has received her evolutionary update and it is time for her to express it. It is time for her to create harmony in herself. And this in the new moon is simultaneously she has to take back her power. And she is learning how to express it to the other person, to communicate it, to put it into writing and to actually have a conceptual understanding of her own femininity is where the future is going. Simultaneously, Mars is coming up to this moon's north node and will pass tomorrow. But at the time of the new moon today, he's not quite there. And so this is another interesting symbol because Mars in Virgo is purifying, cleaning himself, figuring himself out. So the Divine Masculine is also awakening at this time. It is, it is as though we are doing it as we figure ourselves out. What is masculinity? How is this masculinity, which is fundamentally our willpower, our outward active force, our wisdom, our discerning capability, our practicality, and our ability to protect? Is our protection, is our masculine power at the highest octave that it could be? Is it aligned with our deepest heart's desires, with our ideals? of what masculinity really should be, of what the Father should be, of what the fully integrated healing man should be, should look like. And so tomorrow Mars is going to move into Libra. And Mars is in detriment in the sign of Libra, which essentially means that he struggles a little bit. 
Yes, being in the sign opposite to his natal sign, Libra has a lot to do with sharing, with balancing, with harmonizing, whereas Mars in his inherent instinctual essence has more to do with my direction, my goals, my desires. And so when Mars moves into Libra, we've got to figure things out a little bit. We've got to balance ourselves out. So Mars is on the Virgo-Libra cusp today at the time of this new moon. The Divine Masculine is having to purify himself to his absolute core. In order for him to align with his essential masculinity, in order for him to move into a future where he is better balanced with the other, with the Divine Feminine, with our partners, with women in general, and thereby we are capable of anchoring what true masculinity looks like. And so this awakening is happening at this time. And this awakening is happening with the new moon in Scorpio. Scorpio is the darkest, most mysterious, most tumultuous, and most powerful sign. But Scorpio is a water sign. Scorpio is our feelings. And so Scorpio is these feelings that come from the deepest part of ourself. Not instinctual in an animalistic type of instinct, but instinctual on a soul-level, intuitive, psychic knowing. Hmm, there's something not quite authentic here. Hmm, there's something not totally finished here. Something not totally being spoken in total truth here. Is our Scorpio capability to discern through the deepest part of ourself, through our most primal, but in the deepest, most soul-level type of primal way, is Scorpio, and is Kali Ma, who is this awakener. She is the divine awakener. She makes sure that we are evolving, that we are learning, and that we do not fall asleep for too long. And she is letting us men know this is the time to wake up. And she might be coming through other women, our partners, our situations that can seem totally unfair and unjust and oppressive. And yet these harsh awakenings are riveting us to look at the question, are my actions aligned with my ideals? Am I moving forward? Am I purifying in such a way where I can be what I see as the highest octave of masculinity? Masculinity, again, is fundamentally wisdom, the discerning capability, the protecting capability, the practical, strong energy. How might we want to purify this energy is for this protecting, powerful willpower to be aligned with reality. And if it comes known that in reality we have been avoiding and not seeing and abusing the softer, downtrodden, overlooked aspects of nature, of what is here. Might we want to address that reality? Might we want to see that reality for what it actually is? And this is what initiates for us the challenge and the opportunity for us to make some serious readjustments at this time in order for us to simultaneously embody our independent power of what it means to be a human being outside of any concepts, any religion, any belief. What power it means to be what you naturally are as a human being, to harness this power and to simultaneously be able to use it in a way that is transformative with others, that is productive with other people, that is evolving us forward in a collaborative, creative way. As we're going to have the energy through the next couple months really be focused on Virgo and Libra, which is about this purifying, fixing what needs to be fixed in order for us to share, in order for us to create, in order for us to balance and this is happening with Mars and Venus and Libra. This is the balancing of the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine. Meanwhile, Mercury is approaching the Sun in Scorpio. And the two will be combust on Tuesday, November 17th in trying to asteroid Vesta that is giving us this deeper, 
penetrative focus? Can we be real? Can we have the real conversations? Can we merge together in a powerful way? Can we actually master what transmutation, what merging, what sexual union, what sexual energy, what fundamental power is? Can we harness this power, not be bashful of it, not be ashamed of it, not be ashamed of our intimacy, not be ashamed of our naked desires, and simultaneously be moving forward, not being caught in these ancient snares that have actually deceived us into chasing after superficial desires that aren't the real human desires, that are disconnected from our human power. We have to align ourselves with our deepest nature, what it means to be a human being. And every human being is inherently shamanic in nature. And this is the new moon trine to Chiron, and actually this new moon's forming a yod with Uranus as well. This is an intense, purifying moon cycle next month that we're going into. And we as shamans, as human beings, are the purifying vehicles on this planet. We are the healers. Every human being carries this propensity in the deepest part of their nature. And yet if we do not descend into these feelings, if we don't feel what's going on deeply beneath the surface, do we ever know what's going on in terms of our own transformative shamanic potential? No, we do not. But if we do descend into our feelings, if we do allow ourselves to feel, to sense, to pick up on what's going on on such deep levels, which requires a letting go, which requires a surrendering and being okay with what's not always comfortable, through the understanding that life is not always about being comfortable in a reality where we're always trying to transform, evolve, and grow into greater and greater levels of what is possible, of our own power, of our own capability, and the depth of what reality is simultaneously. It becomes so deep. It becomes unfathomable to express. It becomes so powerful. It is unfathomable to put it into words. And it simply overtakes us. And we understand that there is nothing greater than being in touch with the nature that we are, even if it sometimes requires going through periods of discomfort and pain because we are shamans. When we descend into our feelings and we feel what is uncomfortable, we are simultaneously healing those feelings. Because by descending into our feelings and there's no way to feel other than feeling, there's no tool, there's no special method. I mean, yes, we can breathe, we can do things, but when it comes to feeling, we simply must feel. And through feeling, the information coming from the depths of our being is told to us. And so, speaking of the divine masculine healing himself, it's not exactly a cultural uh, pervasive thing on this planet for men to do this because we've been culturally trained to believe that it's not in our service to descend into uncomfortable feelings that prevent us from doing so much in the world. And yet Mars is going to move into a sign he's in detriment in. This isn't exactly about doing everything on the surface the way culture and the past expected us to do it. Oh, got to have the 9 to 5 job, got to make sure all the bills are paid, blah, blah, blah. Yes, let's make sure we're surviving and taking care of ourselves as much as we need to, to survive and take care of ourselves. But let's not be deluded into thinking that by giving all of our energy to the surface level distractions, that we are actually bettering ourselves or other people in any way. This is not what is happening here. Masculinity in general, which is for men and women, does not matter your sexual gender or role, masculinity, which is the fundamentally active doing force that is protective, that is self-initiating, has to understand that we have to at least give some of our energy to the feelings that are coming up from us now. In fact, this is the important thing for us to integrate our capability and our brilliance with our feelings, with our identity, with our deeper calling. And this is the challenge right now. It is a challenge. It's all got us pressed into difficult situations. It's all got us 
stretched out and all these invisible parts of ourselves become uh, available to us and we can, you know, release this stuff like juicing a fruit and we're getting juiced like this. And so this is what's happening is we have Uranus forming a yod. On one hand, Uranus is in conjunct to this new moon at 19 degrees Scorpio. And Uranus is our independence, our, in, our individuality, and being in the sign of Aries, Uranus is our self-autonomy. I can do it on my own. I'm a brilliant individual. I can invent my own solutions, and I can plan my own future, because I know what I know. It comes straight from me. But this is trying to integrate our feelings. And it's like our feelings are saying, but yeah, but there's another part of ourself that's also brilliant, that's also inventive, and it's not coming from psh, mental, intuition, spiritual, masculine, light land. Yeah, the masculine is what is light and bright, and Eureka, sun explodes in our, in our head. This is Uranus and Aries. And yet there is brilliance, there is wisdom, there is capability that is coming from another part of ourself that is also saying, but I'm brilliant too, I want to share myself too. And what's this? It's coming from way down below, way beneath the surface. And so it's like these two parts of ourselves are just like, how do I bridge these two together? And Uranus, on the other hand, is forming an inconjunct to Jupiter. And this is a Yod formation we're going to talk about. It's a very intense, Virgonian, purifying aspect which is, you know, purifying. It's like rubbing clean the dishes, you know. It is a sometimes redundant having to go around and around and around and we come back to the same issues, the same greasy spot, and it's just like, just freaking come off. And we're just doing this process. It's coming off. But like Buddha said, it's like the silk, you know, scarf going over the mountain. Sometimes it takes quite a few passes for us to clean up here. But this Jupiter Uranus in conjunct is about us aligning our independence with our ideals, with our philosophy, with our actual conceptual understanding. And this is called an ontology. This is how we actually conceptually break apart and understand our universe. We're being challenged to shift around our beliefs, our understanding, our philosophies, to bring our brilliance in. Simultaneously, we're having to shift around how we handle our feelings, how we manage our feelings, how we schedule time for our feelings and our deeper parts of ourself that requires us to get to know it and to understand it and tap into these core desires and be re-empowered with the shamanic potential of man. And this Yod is forcing Uranus into Juno in Libra opposite to Uranus. And this is the balancing of our total uniqueness, our total brilliance, our total genius with our capability to be in harmonious, loving relationships with other people, especially our most intimate, beloved partners. Juno is Jupiter's wife in the Roman paradigm who was forced to maintain a marriage out of commitment an expectation as her husband went around and did whatever the hell he wanted. Juno wants actual equality at this time. And this is the awakening of the Divine Feminine. Venus is in Libra now, just past the Moon's North Node. We want fairness. We want respect. We want reverence. We deserve these things. Simultaneously, the Divine Masculine is waking up and saying, you know what? You do. I see that culture and that the past and that tradition has not given those things to you. You have been disrespected. The balance has not been harmonious or pleasant or beautiful. And so we are striving towards this beauty. We are striving to correct the past, to correct the past paradigm, our cultures, our traditions, what our fathers did that, we did that they did not know that they were doing because it's simply passing on tradition. Man after man after man. And now I am taking this responsibility on myself to purify myself so that my sons and that future generations and future men do not have to be deceived by the cultural misrepresentations of what real harmony and what real beauty looks like in relationship and in the world in general. Because this disbalance between the masculine and feminine has affected the world on every single level. 
When we start to understand that this masculine-feminine disbalance is a fundamental disbalance found fundamentally in culture, you see it on every single level of culture. So we have to figure out how to respect ourselves. Yes, we have a core power. Men have a core power. Masculinity is essential. The core power of masculinity is to protect the downfallen and the weak, those who can protect and uplift themselves. The responsibility of man is to inform the world of our wisdom coming from discernment, coming from our first-hand experiences. You can't simply run off and believe those things. You will fall down. You will hurt yourself. I want to provide for you the mature guidance that will keep you on your feet and strong. So we must embody all of our own power at this time. And simultaneously, we must learn how not to oppress other people at the same time. Oh, well, this is my understanding, so your understanding is, well, that's not the accepted understanding, so you need to adapt to the accepted understanding. Oh, well, we have this structural meditation technique. We have this, you know, structural healing technique. It all focuses on breath and affirmations and what you're conceptually doing in your hand and visualization and all of these things. And, I, you know, when it comes to your feelings, and these more murky, complicated, oh, karma and relationships and sexuality. Well, we don't, we don't talk about sexuality in this spiritual course. It's time for us to include the full spectrum. It's time for us to look into the areas that we might not be comfortable at looking at because we haven't reintegrated these lost and forgotten parts of ourself back into the rest of ourself. So this is the opportunity to open the gates and invite our power our mystery, our darkness, back into ourself. That way we can get in touch with reality. This is the opportunity for us to get in touch with reality. See where I, our beliefs, cultural beliefs, our past training, might have made it difficult to achieve real balance and harmony and love in ourself, in our relationship, particularly with all these fundamental masculine and feminine distortions that at this time are now changing. The Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine are awakening at this time. It is happening in different ways. So now is the opportunity for us to get deep with this. Let us get a little existential. Let's step into the spiritual, the more far out, the more collective. Our personal individual experiences reflect the collective experience, reflect the past history of this entire world, of this entire nation, of this entire culture. We need to step into the more far out existential reality that our life is a reflection of these deeper values and deeper truths. So through the next two weeks, the moon is going to move through these more outer, societal, far out signs. Tomorrow morning, the moon moves into Sagittarius. We've got these brilliant intuitions, this forward-moving energy, these great spontaneous intuitive conversations. Late Sunday, Monday, that moon in Capricorn conjuncts Pluto, squares to Uranus. We get this evolutionary push to keep go going, to go deeper. Thursday, November 19th, the moon moves into Pisces. And that weekend, we see Venus square to Pluto and Venus opposing Uranus. So not this upcoming weekend, but the next weekend we enter this period that is more tumultuous. Venus in Libra, opposing Uranus. Now we're getting tested how well our relationships are balanced, how well we are respecting our own genius and our own brilliance. And our relationships are being challenged to evolve. Our concepts of balance, our concepts of harmony, our concepts of what a good, balanced relationship is supposed to be and is supposed to be look like is being forced to change is being challenged and there can be a crisis of consciousness which invites us to step into levels deeper that we've known before areas that we've never explored and start stepping into what might be outside our comfort zones in order for us to harness our own inner power so the weekend after this upcoming weekend is a powerful weekend where we can really look at our values and match them up. 
Are our values serving us? Are our relationships serving us? Our relationships are a reflection of our own inner values. As our own inner values change, so do our outer relationships. This is the opportunity for us to restructure ourselves, for us to realign ourselves in order for us to step into our true power, our true mysterious capability, our healing capacity with others. So this next moon cycle is a little bit serious. There is this getting real with it, stepping up to reality, having to put aside all the distractions at this time. But if we can do this, this is the opportunity for us to simultaneously discover our inner magician. Our inner capability to take any given thing and transmute it, transform it into something else. For us to become our inner alchemist and see that any disturbing, uncomfortable, unpleasant iron can become, can transform into gold, which is the inherent essence of ourself, of our soul. Namaste.